So we all like to drink stuff, right? But do you ever think about what happens to these beautiful single-use glass bottles when you're done with them? Are we really just gonna keep throwing them in the trash? Let's meet somebody today who wants to fix that. Come with me. Hello, I'm Karen McNamara. I live here in Truckee, California, and Conscious Container is a revolution about taking single-use bottles out of the waste stream through refilling. This is a program about reuse. It's about collecting and washing and refilling glass bottles. And we started in the craft beer industry because they get it. When I started, I was looking at wine bottles, but the industry wasn't quite so open to having bottles not be perfect, although I do believe they will come along. But the craft brewing industry, when I pivoted over, that was my plan B, they were very like, yes, um, we get it. Sounds like a great idea, gonna be challenging, but they've been yes all along. And this is not a new idea, is it? No. <laughs> all bottles were refillable up until World War II. And then after that, the, the beer industry began to decline and there were refillables, but World War II introduced single-use single containers and packaging of all kinds. So that's sort of where single-use began. And as the, as the brewing industry came down to about 100 brewers across the United States, they really began, you know, market forces and big business sort of began to move away from the refillables and into single use. And that's where we started on this path. I think the last refillables were in the 90s. So yeah, it's, it's bringing the, uh, the, the old back to the new. So are there any brewers currently using refillables in the United States right now? Byron is a craft brewer in Missoula, Montana, and they bought a bottle washer and they get over 700,000 bottles brought back to their brewery a year, and those bottles are refilled. And they do incent people for those bottles when they bring them in. You know, they are setting the mark high, but this can be done. And it's so great, because they really believe in what I'm doing, and they're helping us by being the customer that I sell the dirty bottles to. Oh yeah, Baron, we know them. We did a Respectful Revolution story on, on Jorgen, the founder of that brewery in Missoula. I met them at a, at a conference, I met the brewmaster, and then when I went out and started looking for information on Byron, it was like I saw the Respectful Revolution video, and I watched, I said, oh my God, this is so great. Because what it did is, it helps me to tell the story about refillables, especially in the craft brewing industry. So I used that video. Every time I was talking with somebody, I'd say, hey, this is what I'm doing, and I'm gonna send you this video to help explain this is what bottle washing can be. So can you take us through the process? If a person wants to not recycle or not throw away their nice, beautiful amber beer bottles, what, and, and they've heard of you, Conscious Container, what, what are the steps? What do I do if I want to recycle my bottles or, or bring them to you? So there's this first phase is proof of concept collection pilots. So there's two running now. The first one is here in North Tahoe, Truckee, and what you do is just collect your beer bottles. We ask you rinse them out, but you know, we'll take them anyway. You drop them off at one of our collection locations. So here at the farmer's market every Tuesday is one of those locations. As you can see, there's lots of bottles here. And then we have six other, actually seven other collection locations around town. And you just bring those bottles in and drop them off, whatever's convenient for you. Perfect. And then the second pilot is down in northern Nevada and we're working with a craft brewer, Great Basin Brewery, and you can drop your bottles off at those two locations and we're trying an incentive-based pilot, so we're paying people for their bottles down there. And that's what the other side of this is, it's not only the environmental impact, it also it presents a cost savings. So that's to me where the viability is, is that once we get this set up, if we, we need enough bottles coming in, but they will cost the craft brewer less money. This is our truck bore here. <laughs> <laughs> the beer bearer wow. board. Mm -hmm. Hey, Esteban, good, good, good to see you. Hi, Stacy. Stacy, nice to meet you. Yeah, good, good. <laughs> so, how much, how much beer are you producing here? We do produce a lot of beer. Um, 
Each of these tanks that you see here um, hold about 5,000 gallons of beer and um, we'll yield about 4,000 out of that in each particular batch we do. Overall, we are the largest um, craft brewery in Nevada. So this is a big deal. Um, how many bottles would you say you're using in a year? Well, I'd have to do a calculation there too, but it's, um, you know, it's well over a million bottles. So well over a million bottles. That's mm -hmm. a lot of glass mm -hmm. out there in the waste stream. Sure. So to me, it seems like this is a big deal that, that Karen's been able to get uh, a brewery like Great Basin on board with what she's trying to do. Sure. And um, well, I, I think it's, it's, first of all, it's an experiment for both parties. Uh, I know it's going to be a lot of work, but um, if we're going to figure out if this is going to work, we have to do a lot of work. And that is our goal at this point. And the challenges we have right now are that breweries all have many, many distinctive bottles. So they're not all alike. And if I put a bottle that might be a half millimeter shorter than the ones we have on our bottling line, it would actually break the bottles or not seal right. So it's very, very important that you have the exactly a good standard bottles to put through the machines. And um, so we can wash our bottles or simple bottles that are like ours, they have to be sorted first, um, which we're on that stage right now. The main goal, I think, is to get, be, uh, get a universal bottle amongst all brewers, at, in, at least in the state or hopefully the United States. Tell me a little bit about working with Karen and, and how that's been for Great Basin. Well, you've certainly met Karen, and Karen has a lot of energy. And uh, we, we really appreciate somebody who has a lot of energy, and it, quite frankly, she's accepted a big challenge. Fortunately, Karen enjoys a challenge. Uh, and we've talked about the, the obstacles she has to do to accomplish this. So um, we're really very, very proud to help her on this road to start. It's the right way to do it. It might not be the easy way or the fast way or at this point the cheap way to do it, but it is the right way. And the challenge is you have to make it cost effective. And to make that cost effective, one has to experiment and figure it out. So can you talk about how you're able to make this work? I, I imagine it's not a one woman show. Mm, not <laughs> at all, not at all. What's been, I've realized as, as I've gone along and I, I think most startups are doing this, but why this is work has been working is the partnerships, the people and the businesses. You know, locally here, businesses have said, yes, you know, I'll be a collection location. The local waste haulers are saying, yes, we're going to help. And this is due to the partnerships, everybody, you know, this is so much bigger than one person. The success of Conscious Container and this, this whole effort is going to be the collaboration of a lot of people. It's a big, big ship to turn. We are going to be successful collectively. All right, let's see what we have. Oh, perfect. A couple for you. Yeah, looks great. Can I give you a hand out? Yep, absolutely. Let's take them on out. Okay. Thanks, Pete. I'll get them over. Thanks, Dave. Thanks. So, Pete, how did this program with Conscious Container get started here at New Moon? Well, our beer buyer, Kevin, found a flyer of Karen's at the farmer's market and contacted her. Uh, we have a great craft beer selection. We carry and provide ethical food choices for our customers. And that program really fit in with what we do here and we wanted to be a part of it. It's been great uh, being a drop-off location um, and turning people on to the idea of reusing uh, beer bottles. Are you finding that people are catching on to the idea? How yeah. are, they, are they receptive? They are very receptive once they find out about it. Um, and so we're just trying to spread the word and uh, educate people uh, and especially, you know, our great beer customers. <laughs> of which there are probably plenty. There's a lot in this town, yeah. 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 And when you have a great selection, you know. It. Right. Karen's very passionate about what she's doing. Once she found out we were interested, she came in and she was ready to set it up and get it going. And, you know, it was impressive. She came in and got us set up and we didn't really have to do too much. So Karen, tell me why you feel so strongly about starting Conscious Container. You know, I grew up where we didn't waste anything. Um, <laughs> my mother had a garden in the back. We ate from our garden and she made us drink. Uh, she had powdered 
non-fat milk. And my <laughs> sisters and I couldn't stand it, but she was reusing. She'd get the powder and make the milk in that same container all the time. And I, so I think the way I was brought up, it was like, you know, I eat all my leftovers. And so why are we, you know, throwing all these things away when we could be reusing them? So I think from a, a very early age, I was brought up that we can't waste. Um, so I think that that was part of this, but there, it was an evolution and it just kind of kept happening in front of me and it said yes and yes and this is the right thing to do. And the more research I did, every other continent almost has refillable glass bottles. And I was just talking to the manufacturer of the largest glass company in the United States mm -hmm. and he said, up to about in Vietnam, they'll reuse a glass bottle like 85 times, something like that, right? And that's wow. like amazing. And why aren't we doing that here? I would love to do that. <laughs> You're I another hate, yes. I hate throwing glass bottles away. It breaks my heart. And it, it sounds, it might sound like a bit much, but I just, sorry, I'm hitting, I, but I really, I just, I can't stand throwing glass bottles away. And kills me. a lot of people say that. And they'll talk with me sort of on a business perspective, but then we'll get into conversations that are personal and it really turns folks, you know, stomachs because, and the last, in 2016, 76% of glass ended up in landfill. Oh, see, that's crazy. And that's crazy. Can you give us some sense of what we're talking about as, uh, as far as waste stream goes? If you were able to implement a successful system. If we could just capture 25% of that marketplace, of bottles that are being thrown away, yeah. that's still 70 million bottles. In California. In California alone. And I'm only looking for what, two, so I'm looking for 20, 24 million just to keep the business viable. And there's 70 million bottles at 25% of the craft beer, bot, 12 ounce craft beer bottles, wow. long necks right. that are produced in California. Goodness. So <laughs> it's a viable bit. There's mm -hmm. enough bottles out there. Absolutely. We just need to get this infrastructure established and craft brewing, I, I believe that's gonna be the right, I feel very strongly that that's the right place to start. I don't know why, but all of a sudden I really feel like having a beer. <laughs> Gee, I wonder why that's. I wonder why that is, case, Tom. You know, we should be up here with a beer, shouldn't we? You know? I know. We <laughs> so, that, so we do have it here. I mean, it's. Yeah, you know, we might know someone. <laughs> yeah, to do that. To do so. that. Okay. Used to recently. This glass is reused a lot too. Yes. That's the way it should be.